transformed into audio by alternativerealities.org. Adult Space Security Officer Speaks Out the following is a list of questions that were directed to former Dull Space Security Officer Talmas said when Costello approximately a year before his death or disappearance. They are followed by his response. Question, when exactly was the, upper human occupied level of the, Arculeta installation constructed? Answer, I heard Dulls was started in 1937-38 by the Army engineers, enlarged over the years, most recent work was completed 1965-66 to connect tunnels to the Page, Arizona, base, site of one of the older underground facilities. The Four Corners base is called Baraka. Most of the Native Americans, the Indians, living in that area are aware of that base and could tell us about the underground life forms that frequently are spotted near those communities, Bigfoot, etc. Question, by what means was the Upper, installations constructed. Are you familiar with the alleged developments made by the RAND Corporation of a highly efficient bore or mole machine capable of melting rock using nuclear-powered Wolfram graphite tip drill cones? Answer, according to several senior maintenance workers, part of it was blasted by nuclear devices in the 60s. There are sections, like the shuttle tunnels that were formed by an advanced tunneling machine that leaves the tunnel walls smooth. The finished walls and those tubes resemble polished black glass. Question, by whom was the Dulce installation originally constructed? Answer, nature started the caverns. The Draco, reptilian humanoids, used the caverns and tunnels for centuries. Later, through Rand Corporation plans, it was enlarged repeatedly. The original caverns included ice caves and sulfur springs that the aliens found perfect for their needs. The Dulce Caverns rival Carlsbad Caverns in size. Question, what exactly are the cattle, and human, organs such as blood, anal tissue, eyes, reproductive organs, tongues, etc. used for, that is the organs obtained via cattle and human mutilations? Answer, read the so-called Dulce Papers for more information. Question, are the various electromagnetically controlled air or spacecraft that have been seen leaving from and arriving at Mount Arculeta, manned by humans, the alien entities, or both? Answer, Arculeta Mesa is a minor area. The craft leave, and are stored, in five areas. One is say of Dulles, one near Durango Company 1 at Tos, Ain. M and the main fleet is stored at Los Alamos, under. Question, others have suggested that some of the entities below Dulles are not of extraterrestrial origin, and that they are actually descended from Saurian or Reptiloid beings such as the Velociraptors or Stenonychosaurus equalis, a serpentine race or races similar to that hinted at in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Answer, yes, some reptoids are native to this planet. The ruling caste of aliens are reptilian. The beige or white beings are called the Draco. Other reptilian beings are green, and some are brown. They were an ancient race on Earth, living underground. It may have been one of the Draconian beings that tempted even the Garden of Eden. Reptoids rightly consider themselves native Terrans. Perhaps they are the ones we call the fallen angels. Maybe not, either way, we are, considered. The squatters on Earth. Question, some have suggested that the so-called underground DT. Bases and tunnels may, for a large part, be literally thousands of years old. Constructions of an antediluvian race which attained to a considerable level of scientific complexity, and who were destroyed by a divinely initiated cataclysm which took place after they attempted to merge their science with the cult slash supernatural forces. For instance some have suggested that the Bermuda Triangle phenomena may be the result of an out-of-control Atlantean experiment that led to a space-time disaster which produced electromagnetic fallout in the Triangle area and elsewhere after they had accidentally loosed powerful forces and energies into the world that they knew very little about. Do your observations tend to confirm or refute such a possibility? Answer: I'm not sure about the divine part. But these aliens consider themselves native Terrans. Question, where do the little grey aliens fit in? 
answer, they work for, and are controlled by the Draco. There are other grey-skinned beings that are not in league with the Draco. Question, did you ever talk to any of the aliens at the base? Answer, since I was the senior security technician at that base, I had to communicate with them on a daily basis. If there were any problems that involved security or video cameras, I was the one they called. It was the reptilian working cast that usually did the physical labor in the lower levels at Dulce. Decisions involving that cast were usually made by the white Draco. When human workers caused problems for the working cast, the reptoids went to the white Draconian boss, and the Draco called me. At times, it felt like it was a never-ending problem. Several human workers resented the no-nonsense or get-back-to-work attitude the working cast lives by. When needed, intervention became a vital tool. The biggest problem were human workers who foolishly wandered around near the off-limits areas of the alien section. I guess it's human nature to be curious and to wonder what is past the barriers. Too often someone found a way to bypass the barriers and nosed around. The cameras near the entrance usually stopped them before they got themselves in serious trouble. A few times I had to formally request the return of a human worker. Question, are there other sites tied into the shuttle network other than those which you mentioned, and if so, where are the entrances? Answer, where? Everywhere. They crisscross the world as an endless subterranean highway. Like a freeway except this one is underground. That highway depends on electric motors, for trucks, cars and buses, for the paved roads, and it is for limited travel. There is another style of transit for freight and for passengers that is for rapid travel. That worldwide network is called the subglobal system. It has checkpoints at each country entry. There are shuttle tubes that shoot the trains at incredible speeds using a maglev and vacuum method. They travel at a speed that excels the speed of sound. Part of your question involves the location of entrances to that base. The easiest way to answer is to say every state in the USA is them. Frequently, the entrances are camouflaged as sand quarries or mining operations. Other complex portals are found on military bases. New Mexico and Arizona have the largest amounts of entrances followed by California, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Kansas, Arkansas and Missouri. Of all the states, Florida and North Dakota have the least amount of entrances. Wyoming has a road that opens directly into the subterranean freeway. That road is no longer in use, but could be reactivated if they decide to do so, with minimal cost. It's located near Brooks Lake. Question, are there any bases in the state of Utah? Have you heard anything about an alleged underground installation within the Wasatch Mountains? Answer, Salt Lake. Lake Powell area, Dark Canyon, Dugway Grounds, Modena, Vernal. All have exits there. Others too. Question, does the Mount Arkulada shuttle system connect with a shuttle system which allegedly radiates from Mount Shasta in Northern California? Answer, yes. Mount Shasta is a major site of alien, elder race, reptilian race, human meetings. Beginning with Cleveland and Grover. Every president in U.S. history has visited Talos City. Truman was supposed to have visited the lower realms as a high archon on Earth. He was supposed to have met the king of the world there, and gave him the keys to the U.S.A. Truman received assurance to new high technology, and victory over all enemies on Earth. He then was introduced to Samaza and Coach, aliens from Boots and Typhon, Draco, both reptilian kings or ambassadors. Truman updated the 100 treaty that began in 1933, Roosevelt, and requested magnetic advance, space knowledge and experiments. Coach agreed, Samaza partially agreed. He exchanged hostages for genetic experiments and magnetic advance, but vetoed space and beam weaponry. Question, did you notice any involvement of high-level Freemasons? Raza Crucians or Jesuits within the underground installation and slash or with the aliens? Answer, yes I did, but that is a loaded question, and I won't comment further.
I'm not a Mason, or a member of any other secret fraternal group. There is one organization I'm a member of, in the USA. That group is commonly called the Central Unit. It is a pleasure to tell you that I am a member of the Subgalactic League of Costa Rica. Question, is there any truth to the allegations that the CIA slash aliens have established bases on the Moon, and also Mars? Answer, I've heard that too, but I haven't seen proof with my own eyes. The aliens do allegedly have bases on several moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The CIA operates in other countries, but I've never heard they operate on other planets. Question, have you heard any hints or rumors suggesting that there may be lower levels beneath the Ultra 7 level of the dull space, and also, where these might lead to and what they might consist of? Answer, yes. Your guess is as good as mine. Sure, there was lots of talk but that doesn't mean it's there. However, I will tell you I saw elevators that were off limits unless you had a number or higher security clearance. At that base, information is supplied to me at a need-to-know basis only. My clearance was Ultra 7. Question, some insist that the U.S. Secret government has developed its own disc craft based largely upon top-secret anti-gravity experiments carried out by the Nazi German scientists during World War II. Have you heard anything referring to this? Answer, when I was working in photo security, heard a lot of talk, never saw the proof, but once in the Air Force I developed a roll of film that showed the craft like Adamski's, with a swastika on the side. Question, Tom, did you have access to the alien craft? Were you ever inside any of them? Answer, yes, I frequently saw them in the garages, there are quite a few of them. The main fleet is stored at Los Alamos. Yes, I entered several crafts. There were two things that stick in my mind, the odd spongy feeling of the floors, and the unusual pinkish-purple color of the lighting. The crew stated the floor becomes rigid in flight, and the purple tint of the lighting changes to bright blue-white. The entire inside of the aircraft are scaled down in size, when compared to the average human. The halls were curved and narrow, but somehow, when inside it appears bigger than it looks. Certain areas, the outermost sections, almost felt and looked alive. I was never taken up in one. Question, can you give me more information on the reptilian race? What do they do on the sixth level, the area called Nightmare Hall? Answer, the worker caste does the daily chores, mopping the latex floors, cleaning the cages, bringing food to the hungry people and other species. It is their job to formulate the proper mixture for the type 1 and type 2 beings that the Draco race has created. The working cast work at the labs as well as at the computer banks. Basically speaking, the reptilian races are active at all levels of the dull space. There are several different races of aliens that work on the east section of level 6. That section is commonly called the alien section. The Draco are the undisputed masters of the 5, 6, 7 levels. The humans are second in command of those levels. I had to argue with one large Draconian boss frequently. His name is difficult to verbalize, Karsfischst, pronounced Throdika SSHH Fosh SST. I usually called him Karsh, and he hated it. The Draconian leaders are very formal when talking to the human race. These ancient beings consider us a lower race. Karsh called me leader Castello, but it was used in a sarcastical way. However the worker caste is friendly enough, as long as you allow them to speak first. They will answer if you address them. They are very cautious beings, and consider most humans to be hostile. They always seem surprised when they found many of the humans were open and trustworthy. There is no fraternizing with the aliens off hours. It is forbidden to speak to any alien race, in the halls or an elevator, without a clear business-oriented reason. Humans can talk to humans, and aliens can speak to aliens, but that is as far as it goes. At the work site, however, it's different. There is free speech in the labs. The camaraderie found in the labs also reaches the computer banks section. In those areas, everybody talks to anybody. However, 
Everything changes the minute you cross the threshold of the hall. Instantly, all conversations become strictly formal. Hard as it was, several times I had to arrest someone, simply because they spoke to an alien. It's a strange place. Question, exactly what first made you aware that something was wrong at Dulles? Seems to me that a place as obviously horrible as this one wouldn't need an Einstein to know that this is a crime site. What took you so long? Are you the guy who blew the whistle? Answer, there are several things you should know about. I took an oath, under the penalty of death, that no matter what I saw or heard I would never divulge the information. Also, I signed a waiver that states I would willingly give up my life if I was found guilty of treason. At the Dulles based reason is anything that mentions the details of daily operations at this facility, when outside the confinement of the this base. When I first arrived, a need to know policy was in effect. The story the Hancos told us was that this is a tri bio transfer facility with advanced technology, doing advanced adventurous methodology for medical and mental gains. Which is a fancy way of saying they do really risky things with human life just to see what would happen. If a medical cure happens, it will be heralded on the surface of the earth as a marvelous new cure, saying it was found after years of research at some well-known medical lab. The real story of the cure is never explained. After all, the doll space is a secret facility. These people are very good at what they do. They do not tell the truth about the unfortunate people that end up in Nightmare Hall. I worked with aliens. With that in mind, you should get the idea of the secrecy and the security at that place. Yes, I know this was not the usual hospital type job site, but in the beginning I bought the whole package. I was reminded daily by Intercom, in the elevators, that this site is high risk advanced medical and drug testing to cure insanity. Please, never speak to the inmates, it can destroy years of work. I'm sensible, when doctors say don't speak to them, who was I to destroy the delicate situation? But one man somehow caught my eye. He repeatedly stated that he was George S. Dash and that he had been kidnapped and he was sure someone was searching for him. I don't know why he sticks in my mind, I found I was remembering his face, thinking he sure didn't look or sound insane but many inmates said that. The next weekend I convinced a friend of mine, a cop, to run a check on the guy, saying I had a run-in with him and was curious. I didn't mention the base at all. It was a sickening feeling when the computer confirmed that George S. was missing. What's worse, the cops thought he was just another guy that got tired of the daily grind and split. That was the beginning. Am I the one that blew the whistle? No. The next Monday, I searched for George, but he was gone. There were no records that explained what happened to him. It was another security officer that came to me saying he and some lab workers wanted an off-duty meeting at one of the tunnels, off the record. Curiosity took over and I said okay. That night, about nine men showed up. They said they knew they were risking me turning them in but they wanted to show me some things they thought I should see. One by one they showed records that proved many inmates were missing people. There were newspaper clippings, and even photos that they had somehow smuggled into the base. They hoped to smuggle them back out, without me turning them into the Honkos. I could see the fear in their faces as they spoke. One man stated he would rather lose his life by trying, than to lose his soul by not doing anything at all. It was that remark that turned the tide. I told them about George and the things I found out about him. After a few hours we pledged to attempt to expose the doll's base. Question, the name Nightmare Hall is descriptive, but surely there was a regular name, what was it called in the manuals? Answer, in the manuals it was called the Vivarium. It describes doll space as a secured facility for tending bioforms of all types. In the report it is retold as a private subterranean bioterminal park, with accommodations for animals, fish, fowl, reptile, and mankind. After seeing this park the name Nightmare Hall is far more accurate than the manual. The accommodations for the inmates at Nightmare Hall fall short of the pretty picture the manual describes.
Question, you mentioned one reptilian leader, Karsfishist, do you know anything about him, like where is he from? Is he from Earth or some other planet? Answer, his name means Keeper of the Laws. They receive their name after they reach the age of awareness. They do not recognize time as an important factor and being aware the way humans do. Upon their age of awareness they are cognitive of the station or position they are destined to fulfill. At that time they chose or allow someone to choose their name. Their name will include the position they hold in several personally chosen letters. Each letter has a personal meaning, known only to the alien and the one that chose their name. Since Karsh's name means keeper of the laws his name includes cash, memory or keep, base word for cash or record, and fascist, law, base word fast or bind. Reptilians choose to be not only private but secretive of the location of their natal place. To them birth, or emergence of life, is considered as one of the sacred rites of life. They consider Earth or Terra their home planet, but several reptoids discuss several star maps. Most of those stars were within the Milky Way. Within those star maps lies the stars and planets of the planets of the Allegiance. Earth being one of the planets in their trade routes. If any human asked clear questions about the Allegiance, the aliens referred the questions to the Draco. The Draco, in turn, referred the questions to their supervisor, me. I did not have that information about the stars, because information was supplied on a need-to-know basis. I didn't need that information. Question, did any of the working caste join in the revolt? Could you give me some names? Answer, a few of the reptilian janitorial crew let us know that they knew we were attempting to sabotage the work going on in the 6th and 7th levels. One of them, with the name Shell, secretly formed a small group of reptoids with the same mindset as my group. Kill took upon himself the danger of informing me. He was as open as is possible in a unique situation. On the day I found out about it, I was inspecting a camera near an exit tunnel. He approached, stooped down, seemingly scraping some non-existent dirt, and he quietly said, A few of us agree that you are singular in your interest in missing human reports. If true, walk away. I'll reach you. If it's untrue, destroy my life now. My heart almost leapt out of my chest, but I silently walked toward one of the wide halls. For the rest of my life I'll remember those words. It was the first time I knew reptilians could have individual thoughts and opinions. Basically, they formed a uniform front with a small variety of interests. Or at least, that was what we had thought. It was a couple days before I heard from him again. As he walked beside me in the 6th level's infamous hall, I heard him say enter the exit tunnel on the 6th level, north, after your shift. The next few hours were long and filled with thoughts of betrayal, or worse, but I shouldn't have worried. I contacted one of the original 9, resistance, men, and let him know, just in case. Gordon wanted to go with me. But I convinced him to wait a few feet from the exit and pretend he was having trouble with his cart, electric, like a glove cart. When I got there, there were three of them. Kill formerly introduced Fasha and Huamsha, name base word Asha or Assist. With that, I quickly grabbed Gordon from the hall and the five of us talked and walked in the dark tunnels about three hours. After that day, the joint resistance group got bigger and bolder. Ultimately. It ended when a military assault was initiated via the exit tunnels and they executed anybody on their list, human or reptilian. We fought back, but none of the working caste had weapons, nor did the human lab workers. Only the security force and a few computer workers had flash guns. It was a massacre. Everyone was screaming and running for cover. The halls and tunnels were filled as full as possible. We believe it was the Delta Force because of the uniforms and the method they used, that chose to hit at shift change, an effort that killed as many as named on their list. We, to this day, do not know who betrayed us. Gordon Annery ran beside me as we ran into the third level exit tunnels, and he died when several bullets slammed into his back. I vaporized that assassin and kept running. And I'm still running.
Gordon will be remembered. Question, tell me more about the flash gun. Is it difficult to operate, or is it like the weapon on Star Trek, that can stun or kill on different modes? Answer, it is an advanced beam weapon that can operate on three different phases. Phase 1, like Star Trek, can stun and maybe kill, if the person has a weak heart. On Phase 2, it can levitate anything no matter what it weighs. Phase 3 is the serious business mode. It can be used to paralyze anything that lives, animal, human, alien and plant. On the higher position on the same mode, it can create a temporary death. Let me assure you, any doctor would certify that person is dead, but their life essence lingers in some strange limbo, some kind of terrible state of non-death. In 1 to 5 hours the person will revive, slowly. First the bodily functions will begin, and in a few minutes, consciousness followed with full awareness. In that mode the alien scientists reprogram the human brain and plan false information. When the person awakes, he recalls the false information as information he gained through life experience. There is no way for a person to learn the truth. The human mind remembers and believes completely the false data. If you attempt to inform them, they would laugh or get angry. They never believe the truth. Their mind always forgets the experience of reprogramming. You asked if the flash gun is difficult to operate. A two-year-old child could use it with one hand. It resembles a flashlight, with black glass conical inverted lens. On the side are three recessed knobs and three curved grooves. Each knob is sized differently. The closer the knob to the hand the less the strength. It's that simple. Each knob has three strengths also, with automatic stops at each position. The strongest position will vaporize anything that lives. That mode is so powerful it will leave no trace of what it vaporized. Question, is the weapon called a flash gun or is there a different name in the manuals? Answer, everybody calls them flash guns, or more commonly the flash or my flashes when talking about it. In the manual it is first introduced as the Armarlux weapon. After that, it is explained as the flash gun. Question, what type of security is found at the Dulls base? What else is used against espionage or unauthorized entry? Answer, I'll mention a few, but it would be nearly impossible to cover it all. The weapon, besides the flash gun, mostly used is a form of sonic. Built in with each light fixture, and most camcorders, is a device that could render a man unconscious in seconds with nothing more than a silent tone. At Dulles there also are still and VCR cameras, eye print, hand print stations, weight monitors, lasers, elf and them equipment, heat sensors and motion detectors and quite a few other methods. There is no way you could get very far into the base. If you made it to the second level, you would be spotted within 15 feet. More than likely, you would become an inmate and never see the light of the surface world again. If you were lucky, you would be reprogrammed and become one of the countless spies for the ruling caste. Question, according to certain reports, the dull space is host to other aliens that live in level 5. Is that true? Can the humans freely roam or meet one to one in the halls or is some type of protocol in effect? Answer, there is protocol from the first time you enter the base and it must be followed every time you see an alien there. From the working caste, to the visiting aliens, to the ruling caste, there is a never-ending checklist of rules, law, and strict protocol. There is never a chance to roam on the fifth level. The alien housing area is off-limits to any human. The hub is surrounded by security, arsenal, military and CIA backslash FBI sections. The area past the security is one of the most secured areas because it houses so many classified files. The entire east side of the fifth level is off-limits except for security personnel holding Ultra 7, security clearance or higher. The garage on the west side of the fifth level requires Ultra 4 clearance. Question, is there proof available that could confirm the allegations of the underground base, or are we just supposed to believe you? Answer, many people have asked that one. 
No, I don't expect people to believe with blind faith. There is tangible proof that has been seen, felt or inspected by quite a few folks. I'm in no position to go on a lecture circuit to explain to every person on a one-to-one -one basis. I am trying to stay alive. All I can do is state again, that Dulles is a secret facility. They work hard to make sure nobody can find the place. If everyone could easily find it, it wouldn't be a secret facility. I've explained the extreme security methods they use. There is other proof available. There are five sets of copies in five different boxes in five different locations that hold complete proof of everything I have tried to explain. Here is a list of contents of each box. Box A, 27 sheets of 8 times 10 photographs of aliens, creatures, cages and vats. Box B, one silent candid videotape, begins on the computer banks, shows the vats, multi-shots of Nightmare Hall. Two shots of Grace, one shot of the terminal showing signs saying to Los Alamos and about 30 seconds of the shuttle train arriving. Box, C, 25 pages of diagrams, chemical formulas and schematics of alien equipment. Box, D, a copy of the new treaty complete with signatures. Box, E, two pages of original alien documents signed by Ronald Reagan, as Governor of California. Each page includes Reagan's signature. The original set mentioned above is sealed in a one-piece, oxygen-free, heavy plastic box. That set includes 27 sheets of 8 times 10 with the original negatives the videotape, and the original microfilm, from which the videotape was copied. The 25 original pages of diagrams, with notations, formulas, Alien Equipment Schematics plus the schematics for the flash gun and my flash gun. The treaty with Reagan signature plus seven other political signatures and for alien signatures. The working flash gun in that box is an extremely dangerous weapon. In the wrong hands, there is no limit on the danger it could inflict. That proof must be protected. But when placed in the hands of certain government agencies, it would not be treated as proof for an alien visitation. That government branch knows the truth and they publicly lie. Think about it like this, do you know, for certain proof, that George Washington lived? Or, do you believe what other people said about him? There is no one alive that saw with their own eyes what is claimed about him. You judge all you know about him by what other people said. Columbus said there is a new land, and it was found. I'm saying there are aliens in several underground bases in this country and terrible things happen in those places. If I die, before it is proven, search for proof. Demand that the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the base, or at least explain why they must keep it secret. There are many people that work at the Dell space that know me. I am challenging those co-workers to speak up, at least anonymously. Send a letter, or a telegram, or fax, to confirm what I have explained. In the name of the brave men, women, children and aliens that died trying to let the public know what is going on at the Dulles facility, expose that horrible place before thousands more innocent people are tortured and die unspeakable deaths. Question, what about the elevators? Do they drop from the surface to the seventh level in a couple of seconds? Do you know anything about them? Are they electrically lifted? Everywhere on the surface world there are elevators made by Otis Elevator Company. Does that company make the elevators at Dulles? Answer, I failed to notice what brand was available in the elevators at the base. I could tell you that there is no elevator anywhere at Dulles that drops from the surface to the seventh level. The security blueprints show the levels are stepped down. Each level drops one floor only. Not even the hub has an express elevator. After the third level, not only would you change elevators, you are weighed and color-coded, before you re-enter the car. All the elevators are magnetically controlled, even lights in elevators, as well as all lights on all levels are magnetically induced. The light bulbs are not the type bought on the surface, but a totally different type of light system. The illumination found there is a closer match to natural sunlight than any artificial light on the surface world.
the shape of the elevators is unique. If you have ever seen an Upperware sugar bowl, you could see the shape copied in the elevator. Sort of like an open-ended oval with another half oval on each side. The elevator shaft matches the shape perfectly. The magnetic controls are in the half oval shape. If you could stand in or close to the half ovals, you would feel the slight pull of the power of those magnets. The motion is smooth and silent, there is a nearly unnoticed surge when the motion starts or stops. There are no cables needed, because the lift is magnetic, not electric. Since there are no cables in the elevator cars there is no chance of them falling. Question, I understand that certain groups of cleared individuals and the government are collaborating with alien groups. Is it known how many groups and of what type they are working with? Answer, I don't know how many groups or what type they are working with. Question, a mysterious security man calling himself Agent Yellowfruit says he worked at Groom Lake, Area 51. The security officer states that he's been in contact with benevolent aliens at the Groom Lake facility, are you aware of such a group? Answer, Yellow Fruit is one of the slang names for Yellow Jack, or Yellow Flag, that shows quarantine and caution in the labs. There are so many different slang names at Dulce Labs that meant quarantine that the workers published the booklet to show the meanings. At Dulce, Yellow Fruit are the lab workers, so called from the yellow light outside the decontamination chambers. Bonana is the older workers, Lemon is the new guys and so on. Question, is there an alien installation under Groom Lake or Papoose Lake at the Nevada test site, and are they conducting biological research at these sites? Answer, most of the stuff at the Groom facility deals with defense, but there is a large storage area in the tunnels that holds thousands of alien craft parts. From what I have heard. The medical tests at the Nevada test site are conducted by and for the Navy. Question, according to my sources, the aerospace companies have a secret underground installation in the Tehachapi Mountains, not far from Rosamond near Edwards Apple. Insiders refer to the Tehachapi installment as the Ant Hill. They are experimenting with advanced technology such as anti-gravity disks. Some have seen basketball-sized floating orbs patrol the facility. Do you have any further information on this? Answer. The California Mountains, Tehachapi, Chocolate, Shasta, etc. all have alien security methods and equipment. The basketball size orbs are used for unmanned patrol. They are silent, but when photographing living beings there is a humming sound. The glow that emits light is magnetic aura. This light is in the visible spectrum, 3900 angstroms. You can see the light, but the light does not reflect off anything. Question, is there anything you can tell me about the moon, alien installations? Atmosphere? U.S. Bases? Answer, there is not much I can tell you there. I wasn't in the lunar program. I heard there was a lot of equipment sent to the moon between 1959 to 1964 under Project Whiteout. Question. How do the aliens use magnetism? Do they use it as an energy source? Is there more we need to know about magnetism? Answer: The aliens use magnetics for everything. They use magnetics as the basic structure for their energy source. The more you learn about magnetics, the better. The human race calls them magnets, the aliens call them lodestar. They have been harvesting lodestars, or lodestones, for centuries. Not only that, they want all the magnetic power on Earth. They intend to continue harvesting that power, now and in the future. As long as we were only using magnetic power as an oddity, there was no problem. But in recent times, the human race has begun using magnetic power and finding more ways to utilize that commodity. There was a treaty made. In the original treaty, the human race didn't mind at all. We considered magnets as hardly more than useless. As people searched for another source for power, we turned to magnetics. The aliens wanted a new treaty. What could we offer? They chose land, underground mining rights, animals and humans for new experiments. The general public never knew about the treaty. 
the governmental, Bavarian cultist, heads of the world chose another treaty in 1933. This time we got high technology in exchange. So now, the more we use magnetics, the more they claim humans, and the lands of the USA. We were sold in exchange for magnets. If you doubt it, look around, there are token companies that really utilize magnetic power, but are depending on electric-based or ceramic magnets, not lodestar, magnetic oxide of iron, based magnets. Question, what do the aliens do with the cow blood and other parts from mutilated animals? Do they need these fluids for research or survival? Answer, the aliens use the blood and body parts for formula to keep them alive, their food, and for use in the growing vats, and for the artificial wombs. Plasma and amniotic fluid are the two most vital ingredients for their lives. Also, the sap of some plants can keep them alive for months. Most of the plants are parasitic in nature but red grapes and okra plants can also be added to the formula to keep them alive, if they have no regular formula. Question, female abductees report being inseminated by aliens. Are they trying to hybridize our species? Answer, yes, they are breeding slave warriors for the upcoming war with the alien races. The serpentine races are in orbit around Earth, Venus and Mars. Question, Abductees have reported that the aliens can pass their bodies and that of the abductee through window glass. Is this a feat of magic achieved by advanced technology or is it a psychic power? Answer: The aliens have mastered atomic matter. They can go through walls like we go through water. It is not magic, just physics. We can learn to do the same thing. It has to do with controlling atoms at will. Question. Are you in communication with benevolent aliens or do you have contacts that are? If you are, can you tell us how we can communicate with their teams? Answer: I am not at liberty to discuss communications with any friendly alien life forms. I can tell you there is a friendly factor active in Costa Rica, I am in direct communication with that factor. I am an active member of the Subgalactic League of Costa Rica. This organization using a small satellite dish, a television set and home radio equipment reach this factor. I might suggest that by using similar equipment and a low band frequency, you may reach the same factor. Question, do you stay in the USA? Or do you live abroad? Do you work now? I know you have been on the run for several years. Answer, yeah, quite a few years. I visit the US but it's really dangerous when I do. I've lived in several countries. I spent a few years in Mexico, working as a mercenary soldier. It's rough work, frequently living in the bush, eating whatever I can find. I spent time in South America, fighting the drug cartel. It's not the citizens, it's the secret government, top officials and American alphabet boys, CIA, FBI, etc. I settled in Costa Rica, bought the small house in Lemon. Actually it is a shanty that someone abandoned. I paid the equivalency of $11 to one of the local constables for the right to call it mine. My name changes when I think someone is asking questions. I've worked in one of the underground bases near the Panama border. It's in the mountains, not very far from a passive but active volcano. It is not as fancy as Tells but the people are wonderful. Question, what is the best city in Costa Rica for an American to visit and maybe move to live? Answer, none of them are worth anything, by comparison, but I like Lemon. There is a real culture shock when you get past the tourist sections. Inside the urban areas, it's not so bad, but away from the beaten path the picture changes. There are no improvements in the shanties, no sewers, plumbing or paved roads. But if you stay in the cities, and you don't mind the big difference in the cultures, the countries have a lot to offer. Nice weather, great beaches and beautiful trees with fruit growing everywhere. Question, are there any other security level names, other than secret, top secret, ultra? Answer, there are many other security clearances, here are a few, Umbra, Stellar, G2-7C, Triad. Mm, 
Universal Military Training, and UMS, Universal Military Service, Astral and Subastral. Umbra is higher than Ultra. Question, ever see a badge with Maji? Answer, no. Question, since you have lived in Spanish-speaking countries, it's obvious that you are bilingual. What other languages do you speak? Answer, other than English, the only other languages I speak are Spanish and Dashu, the common language, alien, spoken at Dulce. I speak Spanish fluently, and enough Ashu to keep myself out of trouble. Shortly after I first transferred to Dulce, I took a crash course in Ashu. Anyone that plans to spend more than one week working at that base, they are wise to learn the basics. Otherwise, you are required to wait for an escort to get around. All the signs at that base are written in the universally recognized symbolic language. Ashu is logical and easy to learn. Question, what are the eating habits of the aliens? Are they carnivores? Answer, that depends whether they are one of the gray worker caste, one of the reptilian worker caste, or one of the higher developed draconian leaders. Also, the created beings, replicants, typed being, or one of the really strange, genetic, mixtures. I'll try to cover a little of each. The formula includes amniotic water, plasma and several other body parts, raw, usually bovine. This nearly clear mixture with a texture of pureed peaches, and almost in that color. The greys make the attempt not to eat around the humans, because the odor of it is very unpleasant to any human. They can spend days or even weeks between feedings. The working cast of the reptilians eat meat, insects and a large variety of plants including vegetables and fruit. They prefer their meat raw and very fresh, but have learned to enjoy some cooked meat like rare beef steak. Unlike the greys, they eat frequently and usually carry or send for food on their breaks. The ruling caste is secretive about their foods. They have created several dietary myths that they carefully embellish when the chance arrives. One of their favorite legends involves one of their ancestors' ability to eat an entire flock of geese in one setting. They rarely eat in sight of any other species. They carefully choose their food, then carry their meal to their quarters. It was only when dignitaries arrive at the base that they join their meals. They enjoy the same foods we do and they have been seen secretly munching on a freshly found snail. The human-looking replicants eat some cooked vegetables. They rely on vitamins and liquid protein for sustenance. If they have to eat on the surface world, they can eat whatever they are served, but as soon as possible they regurgitate. Their digestive systems frequently fail to process the food properly. The engineered beings have a special diet, created for their dietary needs. The mixture includes several organ foods blended with plasmatic fluids, amniotic liquids and parasitic materials. These unique animals also enjoy occasional green plants, usually grasses or lettuce. The creatures that are designed to become warriors, eat protein-filled liquids. Question, in the DOS papers, copper seems to be high on the importance list. And what methods is copper used? Answer. One of the main uses of copper at Dulce is containment of the magnetic flow. Magnets are used everywhere at that base. The infamous vat's interiors are lined with copper, and the exterior walls are clad with stainless steel. The mechanical arm that stirs the liquid is made of a copper alloy. Other uses include dietary needs in a few of the transbiotic beings. There are several specially made cells or rooms built first with lead then magnetic steel then clad in copper. It is in those cells on the fourth level that contain living or a essence. This essence is what you would call, a captured disembodied, soul or astral body. Growing multi-species beings, blood formulas and human parts in vats sounds like a bad plot to a science fiction movie. The doctors and scientists of the world claim you can't mix the species. Question. The concepts mentioned in the DOS papers sounds far-fetched. Could you provide information that the average surface world reader could understand about similar things? Answer. The doctors and scientists on the surface world may say that, but underground, away from the prying eyes of ethics boards, 
they do grow transgenous beings. There is a lot of written material available at libraries. One of the best sources is an easy-to-read book published back in 1969, by Prentice Hall International, with the title of The Second Genesis, The Coming Control of Life by Albert Rosenfeld. In this book, they discuss animals that may be especially bred to supply genetically reliable organs for people, and dot 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 the use of fetal or embryonic material from which adult-sized organs and tissues may be grown. Also he discusses the fact that embryonic tissue has no immunological activity, therefore it cannot provoke the defense mechanism in the recipient. It will join the body not as a foreign antigen, but as a natural protein. He further discusses solitary generation, commonly called virgin birth, but also known as parthenogenesis. With one virgin birth and 1.6 million births savage on the surface of the world, in dulse the trait is reversed. Occasionally, a normally born human infant is born in the hospital wards on the seventh level. Parthenogenesis is the method used to grow type to beings. The now common transsexual surgery on the surface world began at the dull space. Men became women on a whim in the seventh level labs, and with the fourth level technology, the brainwashing resulted in the eager desire to become a woman and that poor man, whether a willing or unwilling participant, firmly believes he always wanted to be a woman. No one could convince him to believe the truth. All things are twisted at Dulles. A quote by Dr. Ralph W. Gerard, in the second Genesis, put in his now classic statement, there can be no twisted thought without a twisted molecule. Most have originated at Dulles. Question, how are the human workers stopped from telling everything about Dulles? Answer, implants. Fear threats to harm the families, and control, also reprogramming with ELF, extremely low frequency, and drugs are the most common methods to encourage the workers not to divulge the location or daily routine. Question, a construction worker at the Ant Hill, comma, the Northrop Stahaka P base, reports seeing 10 to 12 foot tall human looking beings in lab coats. Who are these guys? Are they from the hollow earth? Answer. They are probably inner earth drones, workers. The deeper you get, the stranger the life forms. The tall men are from the subterranean levels, lower yet are the dwarf deformed forms. I don't trust either of them. There are other forms, that both the tall man and the dwarf man fear and loathe, they are similar to Bigfoot in appearance, but extremely violent and enjoy eating whatever they find while it is still alive. They are subhuman and demented with an ike around 15. The reptiloid, hominoid as opposed to quadruped or serpentine, life forms stay in caves or caverns that aren't very deep. They prefer the desert mountains. They use camouflage rather than fighting, but they do carry vril rods for protection, flash guns. They do have a symbol, not the hokey snake with wings that I keep seeing in the public. The reptoids use a dragon with its tail in its mouth. A circle, with seven pointed stars in the middle. Question, there have been reports of the Delta Force having black vans with no tires that hover over the ground. How much are we, USA? Already interworking with alien cultures? Answer, I haven't seen the black vans you mentioned. We are totally submerged with alien cultures. Very little of the original human cultures have survived. Question, how can we? the public, go after, or expose an alien culture which is covered and hidden. Answer, go for the best shot. That means go after the reptoid. They stay near the surface, they choose to try to hide and avoid contact. They are soldiers, doing a job and usually there are two or three at each job site. They are manning a remote post. They are not to bother the humans unless they are endangering the post. Most of them are not hostile and won't kidnap you, they may blast you with a flash gun that may paralyze you, you won't remember the flash, for an hour or two and cause confusion and mild fear. It could cause you to black out for a while. It is their way to escape and buy time to hide any visible equipment. If you know any areas with repeated reptilian sightings, then that is the place for you to look. They are fearsome to meet face to face.
and their voices are harsh and whispery with heavy assesses, but most of them understand English and several other languages. Wear something with a reptile, not something violent, like St. George killing the dragon, in sight. If you see one, keep your hands open, palm forward, arms down. That is the non-aggression approach. Don't raise your arms, unless told to. Don't carry anything in your hands or arms. If he doesn't run, walk slowly towards him. Let him speak first. They consider humans repulsive and hostile and threatening, with good reason. Don't try to offer him anything, don't touch him or anything of his. If he hisses at you, back up a couple feet, but don't look away. It simply means he finds you smelly. Don't try to overpower him, he is stronger than 10 or 12 men. Usually, if he hasn't run so far, he is curious and wants to talk to you. Fight your fear and your thoughts of panic. Question, how do we get closer to some kind of data to prove to others that there really is a danger from non-human beings? Answer, good question. I'm afraid he will find the proof the hard way, when we are invaded. Try to keep a small camera with you at all times. When you search for reptoids, keep it in your pocket. Question, is there a specific location where the public can set up their cameras and equipment to document an alien government base, and slash or their activities? Answer, the problem is, most of the meetings are held in military bases or underground. The Groom Lake facility does fly several alien craft that regularly fly over unpopulated land that go back and forth from several bases. Southern California has several notable areas. 29 Palms, Lancaster or Chocolate Mountains are well known for such activities. Question, could you provide us with a copy of your badge or card you use that dulls? Answer, badges or cards never leave the bases. All exits have bars or walls of metal. To open, to go out requires using the card. When you use it for an exit slot, the card won't come out. Each time you leave the base, you are issued a new card, with all the usual data about you, plus your weight added, corrected daily. There are several mines in the chocolate MTS. That open into a base highway, but be aware that they are patrolled regularly and there are cameras there. Question. There are so many types of really far out aliens seen in TV, movies, magazines and popular fiction, is there one type of a fictional unknown race, in your opinion, that fits the term alien? Answer, yes. There are two, an alien that is totally indescribable, and another would be a pseudo-alien. Question, what are the dimensions of the DOS facility? Answer. There are 1,700 paved miles of roads under Dulce in northern New Mexico. Towards Los Alamos is another 800 miles of tunnels. The bass is still growing, due west. Question, what is the top depth? Answer, the first level starts 200 feet from the surface. Each level has a ceiling of 7 feet, except levels 6 and 7, the ceiling there is 45 and 60 feet. There are approximately 45 feet or more between each level. The average highway ceiling is 25 feet. The hub at the base is 3,000 feet wide. Use a 7.5 minute scale map to try to comprehend the size of the place. Question, are there regular vehicle exits that can be observed from the ground? Answer, yes, but they are inside Los Alamos. Question, are there aerial exits that can be observed? Answer, 20 miles due north of Dulce is a large hangar, it is hidden by a facade of cliffs. Look for an isolated short road on the top of a mesa, with no road to or from the top. Question, are the ventilation shafts visible? Answer, the ventilation shafts are hidden by bushes or vents inside caves. There are five on the top of the mesa, be aware there are cameras inside most of the vents. Question. Is there external security, and can we recognize them in or around the town itself? Answer, there is minimal security on the surface, most of the men, and women, are Air Force or Highway crew men. There used to be a Best Western motel that hosts or hires a lot of base workers from Level 1. I don't know if that motel is still operational.
most of the security force live in Santa Fe. Others live at White Pine, Los Alamos. Question, are there security sensors? What type? If so, what is their power source? Answer, yes there are many types of sensors, radar, infrared, heat sensors, microwave, and, and satellite. Most of the sensors are powered by magnetic power. The only thing you may notice on the surface would be an occasional satellite dish. Question, if you can, give us some information on the upcoming war with the aliens. When does it start? Do you recommend going underground? Answer, the war has already begun. To start, they use weather control devices that can cripple a city in hours. Storms, flood and drought, with those few things they can bring any country to their knees in a hurry. Yes, I do recommend going underground. Choose a location that has a higher elevation than the surrounding terrain. Pick out a cave or even an abandoned mining shaft or two. Bury a cache of supplies, including food and water, near these locations. Place the supplies in heavy plastic boxes that have tight lids, to prevent the destruction by earth-burrowing rodents and insects. Then plan to live like a squatter when it becomes necessary. If you own land, create a system of tunnels and tell no one. Use your tunnels to secrete your supplies, and plan to live in those corridors when you must. Question. What about the reptilian ships that are in orbit around the equator, are they cloaked? Answer, they are not cloaked the way you may think. It's more like nobody is learning to see, even though it is in plain sight. Like the mailman becomes invisible because you are so used to seeing him you never noticed he is alive. One of the favorite methods of covert activities is to hide their operation in such an obvious way, or place, that no one would suspect it is covered. Question, what are the greys susceptible to? Answer, the greys are photosensitive, any bright light hurts their eyes. They avoid sunlight, and travel at night. Camera flashes causes them to back up. It could be used as a weapon against them, but they recover quickly. It could buy enough time to escape. Use commands, or nonsensical words in the form of commands and they will back up. Their brain is more logical than ours and they do not create fun. They do not understand poetry either. What really confuses them is saying things in Pig Latin. We learned that in a hurry, and used it against them, the Greys, and the Dulce Wars. Question, can Greys read your intentions if you came up behind one? Answer, yes. They read your intent, because they use your body's frequency. The human race broadcasts a frequency that they recognize as an electromagnetic impulse. Each person has a slightly different frequency, that difference is what we call personality. When a human thinks, they broadcast strong impulses, in the case of fear the frequency is loud and easy to recognize. Question, can we shield ourselves against their mental control? Answer, we can shield ourselves against them. However 95% of the human race never try to control their thoughts, and controlling our own thoughts is the best weapon. The average person rarely thinks in a clear pattern. That allows the brain to think in a chaotic way. Control your thoughts, and you can stop the aliens attempting to abduct and control you. Controlling my own thoughts have kept me alive for years. Question. Could you shed some light on the type of human the aliens are looking for when they abduct? Answer, I can't tell you that the most common are petite women in their early 20s or early 30s, dark-haired boys between 5 to 9, small to medium-sized men in their mid-20s to mid-40s. But, let me stress that there are all types of people being held against their will in the doll space. There are tall heavy men and women, teenagers elderly folks and very young girls in the cages and the vats. I only mention the most common age size of the small young men and petite women. The boys are favored because at that age their bodies are rapidly growing, and their atomic material is adaptable in the transfer chamber. The young small women are frequently very fertile. The men are used for sperm. I have no idea why they prefer small to average size men. Question. Did you ever see twins or triplets, etc? Answer, since you mentioned it, no. 
It never crossed my mind to search for them. But then that doesn't mean they aren't there. There is no way I could have seen everybody at that huge complex. Question, what is the prevalent human race at the Dulles base? I am curious about both the human workers, and the inmates. Answer, the human workforce is made of people from every nation on the surface world. The one thing they share is that they all speak English. If you are asking if there are white, black, red, yellow and brown skin color, again I'll have to say that there is no prevalent race there. As for inmates, I could see all races there. From what I could see, it looked like there were more white people, but again, I saw a constant flow of different people, many I think, were only there for a few hours. Question, please explain the method they use to identify each inmate. Answer, no one has a name. When first brought to this facility, they were issued one large number. Usually that code has a mixture of numbers and letters. They show the place, how, and by who, followed by the time, age, sex and finally the personal number, their SS. Number. For example it might look like this, nvlv 00700p00-000m, 000000000. Question, with that huge facility, trash and garbage must be a real problem, how do they dispose it? Answer, it was never a problem. Some of it is reformed or melted down then remade. Some of the wet garbage is eaten by bacterial forms, and what's left is vaporized in a vet-like chamber. The residue of that action, it takes them months to get enough to measure, is used in a complex lye and used to fertilize crops. Question, where is your family? Not just your wife and son, but parents and siblings? Answer, Kathy and Eric are still missing. My parents died in a car crash when I was in my teens. I have one brother, if he is alive I suspect he is inside an underground base somewhere. I haven't heard from him for several years. Please pray for them, please. Question, what is your birth date, and where were you born? Answer, 23rd of April 1941, Glen Ellen, ill, actually in a farm at home, in the place now called Glen Ellen. My birth certificate list is at Wheaton, ill. Question, you have been through so much, and yet keep fighting, what is your biggest fear? Answer, that the general public will forget to trap an innocent people in the despicable place, and will ignore the hundreds of children, women and men added to that place every month.